Well, hello everyone, my name is Paul Mass and I'm an application engineer here at Ally PLM Solutions. I'd like to welcome you to this session in which we're going to talk about how to improve technical documentation by using Cortona 3D. As far as today's agenda is concerned, I'm going to begin with a short slideshow in which I'll give a brief overview of Ally PLM Solutions and who we are, followed up with some background information on Cortona 3D. After that, I'm going to go into a live demonstration in which I'll show an example of some published output that was created with the tool, and then I'll go into a real live demonstration of how we would create that publication. The two key questions I'd like to answer today are, what does Cortona 3D do, and what will Cortona 3D do for you? During the first proportion of the presentation, I'm going to review some of the typical business challenges around technical documentation that impact many of the companies we work with. And as I'm going through those challenges, you may find that they're similar to some of the problems you're facing today. As I move forward, we'll begin to see how Cortona 3D presents itself as a viable solution to these challenges. And then, of course, at the end, I'll make sure that you have our contact information in case you want to get a hold of us for uh, questions or maybe even to set up a, a follow-up demo for your company, which could be either on-site or over the web. Um, so I'll make sure that that information is up there towards the end of the presentation. So who is Ally PLM Solutions? Uh, we are a product lifecycle management solutions provider with extensive expertise in CAD, CAM, CAE, PDM, and technical documentation software. Uh, for example, some of the tools we support are SolidEdge and Unigraphics NX for design work. Then we have NX CAM and CAM Express for manufacturing, NX CAE and FEMAP for engineering analysis. And then we have Team Center, Insight, and SharePoint. So we've got a few different options there for product data management. And last but not least, and also the topic of today's presentation is Cortona 3D, which we use for technical documentation and communication. And so not only do we provide software across these disciplines, but we also provide training, uh, tech support, mentoring, consulting, and we provide these services to our clients across most of the eastern half of the United States. Our home base is right here in Cincinnati, Ohio. We do have a training facility here on site, uh, so if you're ever interested in our training services, um, you could give us a call and talk to us about that. We're able to either come here on site or we do offer training over the web as well. So feel free to give us a call if, if any one of those services piques your interest. The first question I'd like to answer today is, what will Cortona do? Basically, Cortona 3D delivers a suite of tools called the Rapid Author Suite, and it is a leading technical communication software used primarily for technical documentation and technical illustration. The Rapid Author Suite of Tools is the only standards-based product that provides business-ready solutions for creating parts catalogs, technical manuals, work instructions, and training materials. Many companies produce documentation by using a combination of disconnected tools such as CAD software, uh, Adobe Illustrator, Word, PowerPoint, and then they even throw some digital photographs in there. So um, they use a, an array of different tools kind of to get to uh, the finished product. What Cortona is going to do is replace these disjointed tools with an integrated environment for producing professional level, customer ready documentation. The documentation created by Cortona is then delivered uh, through multiple different methods including HTML which can be published on the web or on a tablet such as an iPad as well as a PDF which can be printed out and delivered as a hard copy to your end user. This concept of authoring the data once and publishing it to multiple formats is unique to Cortona 3D. On the right hand side of this slide we can see some of the companies who are currently taking advantage of Cortona's powerful capabilities such as uh, Let's see, we got GE over there, Honda, Rolls-Royce, and Mercury, just to name a few. So they, we got some big names uh, already taking advantage of Cortona 3D. They've seen its power and uh, decided to adopt that into their toolbox. The next question I want to address is, what will Cortona do for you? So we've, we've talked a little bit about what it is and what it does, but what's the value going to be for you? What's the return on investment going to be? And let's start out by talking about some of the business pressures that we see currently in today's market. And I'm going to refer back to a, a study done by the Aberdeen Group back in 2010. And the Aberdeen Group is an industry analysis group with a practice in the area technical documentation. And what they identified 
were some trends that manufacturing companies are facing. In general, they found that there are a few areas that are increasing business pressure, such as accelerated product volume and complexity. Uh, the end users are demanding better quality documentation. Companies are trying to achieve shortened development cycles. And that the market competition continues to increase. So what it all boils down to, basically, is that the demand is for increased volume of content created in less time with fewer resources. And this is exactly what Cortona 3D is going to help us to achieve. With Cortona 3D, uh, we're going to remedy some of these challenges by reusing existing content to reduce time to market. What I mean there is there's already some properties and metadata in our CAD files that we can extract out of them when we import them into Cortona so that we're reusing things that already exist. Um, we're going to reduce reliance on text instructions. What you're going to see is that Cortona creates interactive 3D animations. Uh, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words, a video is even better. So if we can uh, create less text and rely more on animations and pictures, I think we can convey our message across to the end user much better. We're also going to make the authoring process much easier and more streamlined for the author and the tech pubs group. We're going to just use one tool as opposed to an array of different tools. It's all going to be um, an integrated environment, the Cortona 3D Rapid Author suite of tools. And we're also going to improve the end user experience by allowing them to view richer 3D graphical data. Uh, it's, it's, much, it's, it's really cool to look at. So when we actually get into the live demonstration, you'll see how the published output is really going to make your company stand out if you choose to publish this stuff on the web. So let's take a look at the traditional process for a product design life cycle. We all know that when we look at this traditional product design life cycle, uh, at a very basic level there are five different phases, design, test, build, deliver, and support. And it's in the, during the last two phases that most of the technical, technical documentation is created. However, there seems to be a wall separating the engineering data and the technical publication data. And then to make matters worse, their traditional authoring processes are labor intensive. The tech pubs team is usually forced to create text manually, uh, recreate illustrations, take digital photographs, and then if they ever want to show an animation, they usually have to create some type of flash animation with it, which is just a static animation, and then you don't really get to edit your viewpoints and things like that. It's just kind of a static, uh, fixed animation. We're going to see that with Cortona 3D, we will automatically generate some text. We're able to create uh, illustrations right there or use existing ones. And uh, the 3D animations will be interactive. We can move them around, zoom, rotate, things like that. After they put in all the trouble of uh, authoring these technical documentations, they're then limited to the output formats such as PDF or PowerPoint, which need to be printed off in paper or burned to a CD, then finally delivered to the end user. This whole process results in a costly, error-prone process which often lags the completion of the engineered product. We're usually always waiting on the technical documentation to be finished before we can really ship the product or before we can support the product. It's the goal of Cortona 3D to eliminate these deficiencies. So if we were to look at uh, the typical workflow of the integrated solution that Cortona 3D offers, it would look something like this. It all begins with your source data, which is typically 3D CAD geometry. Uh, maybe we have an associated bill of materials and other assets such as 2D illustrations. And so we take all of our source geometry and import it into one of the three main modules of the Rapid Author suite of tools to begin authoring our technical publication. During this importation process, Rapid Author optimizes the data by removing intellectual property. So we want to take away all the pro proprietary uh, information so that the, our parts can't be reverse engineered. And we simplify the structure to create what's called a Rapid Project. You might compare Rapid Author to Microsoft Office in that Microsoft Office consists of different modules such as Word, Excel, PowerPoint, etc. So the three main modules of Rapid Author are uh, Rapid Catalog, which allows you to quickly and easily create interactive parts catalogs, Rapid Manual, which is used to create work instructions and manuals, and the way those two differ is that maybe a work instruction uh, 
would be used to communicate a strict path of steps to the assembly team that must be followed in, in, in order to achieve a certain task, whereas a manual might be used out in the field to convey the steps required to complete a service, operational, or maintenance procedure. So uh, we'll see that although they're both created in the same tool, the rapid manual tool, they do have a little bit of differences there and they're controlled by the template that we use. They're also called the specification, which I'll expand on later. And then finally we have the rapid learning module which lets you create interactive computer-based training scenarios which will help to improve the efficiency of your technicians. Um, you can have them sit at a computer and go through a uh, build or disassemble procedure and it's going to make them sharper technicians, uh, make them more efficient out on the shop floor or out in the field. The beauty of a rapid project is that we only need to import the data once and then can open that project in any one of the modules to create whichever type of technical publication we desire. Once we're done with the authoring process, we can then publish that document out to an array of different formats such as web ready HTML or XML, hard copy PDF, or even to a tablet or a smartphone. The whole idea here is that we author once, publish to any format. We're trying to reuse uh, the work that we've already put into it. We don't want to have to go uh, start from scratch each time we want to create a new document. Another nice thing about Cortona 3D is that it comes out of the box with some standard specifications such as DITA, which is commonly used in the commercial airline industry, S1000D, which is used in military and government applications, or SCORM, which governs the way web-based e-learning documents are laid out. Using one of the delivered specifications creates less work for you and will help create consistency from one document to the next. However, you will have the ability to create a speci specification that follows your own business rules via the rapid specification module. Uh, a specification simply governs the look and feel of your published content and can be thought of as a template. So we give you some stuff out of the box if you want to uh, tweak those templates, you're able to do so or you can create one completely from scratch to satisfy your own business rules. And then last but not least, we do have the option uh, for the entire authoring process to be managed inside of Siemens Team Center, which would allow you to maintain links from your engineering data to your tech pubs and gives the ability to store rapid project data set along with the published output in Team Center for review and shared access. So now that we've kind of uh, heard an overview of the product and learned the value that Cortona 3D can bring to your company, let's take a look at a live demonstration of some published output along with what it takes to create a Cortona 3D rapid project. As I had mentioned before, Cortona 3D comes with a suite of tools called Rapid Author. And to show you what I mean by that, I'm going to come down here to my Windows Start button and navigate to the Cortona 3D folder where we can see all the different modules that make up that Rapid Author suite of tool. The one I'm going to be focusing on today is the Rapid Catalog module. If you're interested in seeing a demonstration of the Rapid Learning module or the Rapid Manual module, I'm going to have links on our website where you can view those videos. And just as a heads up, the first portion of those presentations will be the slideshow, which we've already viewed, and the latter half will be the live demo of that specific module. So if you've already seen the slideshow and you just want to see the demo, feel free to fast forward to that portion of that presentation. The way I'd like to start by uh, demonstrating the Rapid Catalog module is by viewing a published output of an illustrated parts catalog. So what we see here on the screen now is the actual finished product of an illustrated parts catalog that you would have displayed on your website. And on the left side of the screen I have a 3D graphics window which is completely interactive and we can see that this is going to be a parts catalog for a brake caliper. I'm able to rotate that assembly around, I can zoom in and out, and I can also pan that object around the 3D graphics window. It's very intuitive and easy to use and as I said before this is going to make your business stand out against the competition when it comes to uh, the end user ordering parts for the products that you manufacture. On the right hand side of the screen is my parts list and what's really cool is that if I click on an item in the graphics window we can see that it's hot spotted or linked to that line item in the parts list so when I click on it it changes color and it also highlights the line item for that specific component. 
up here in the left hand portion of the screen is a drop down menu that shows me all of the different pages that make up my catalog so I can see that there's an exploded view let's take a look at what that would look like it's going to automatically animate to that exploded view and this view was created inside of the tool inside of the rapid catalog tool so your tech pubs authors aren't going to have to go back to the cat operator and ask him to create uh, special views or anything like that we're able to create explosions section views things of that nature this button here allows me to toggle on my 2D graphics where I'll be able to see a 2D image of that explosion. This also was created inside of one of the Cortona modules called the Cortona 2D Editor Pro. And what's really neat about this is that it's not a JPEG or a bitmap, it's actually a CGM and it's not going to degrade in quality as I zoom in or out. You know, we're typically used to seeing JPEGs pixelize or get distorted as we zoom in and out. That's not going to happen with the uh, 2D graphics that we create inside of the Cortona 2D editor. Again, it has callouts that were created inside of the software, and which are still hot spotted back over to the parts list. I'm able to put logos on my 2D graphics. I can put text on screen, things of that nature. Then I'm going to drop down to this last page called the Rebuild Kit. And what I want to point out here is that we're able to um, create sections of certain objects. So you can see that I've, I've split the assembly in half and I've left the components that are included in the rebuild kit uh, to be their full representation. I've also changed their color to add contrast. And I've made the, uh, the other items transparent in color. I've set those to be background items. I've also put a call out in the 3D graphics view that um, was also created inside of the Cortona Rapid Catalog module. And notice over here that I can have my parts list to adjust to whatever's showing on screen. So that's just kind of a brief overview or brief look at what the published output would look like. Let's actually go inside of the tool and see what it would take to create that kind of project. First thing I'm going to do is come to uh, my file drop down and create a new project and maybe I'll call this a caliper assembly and then I want to s select my specification and as I mentioned earlier specification simply governs the look and feel of your published output. I'm just going to use the generic illustrated parts catalog specification that's delivered out of the box with Cortona 3D. I'm ready to say OK and the first thing I want to do is import some data so I'm going to choose to import some data and what happens here is the rapid generator plugin fires up and notice that we support all the major CAD packages the ones that we're most interested in are Solid Edge and NX those are the products we support I also have a configurable rapid data import tool which I've created with the rapid configuration module the rapid configuration module allows me to create a data import tool that maps the metadata to the areas inside of my project where I'd like it to go and things of that nature. So I'm able to set up configurable data import tools as well. So I can go ahead and hit start here and select my assembly and it starts the importation process. What's happening right now is it's uh, stripping away all of the intellectual proprietary data so that this thing can't be reverse engineered and it's also extracting the metadata that we would like to use in our technical publication. The first thing I want to do is show that assembly on screen and notice that when it first comes in it appears kind of low resolution, it kind of is, uh, has a blocky look to it. What I can do is select the items that I'd like to turn the resolution up on and set those to their initial view or their initial resolution and we'll see that they come in much more crisp and clear. So the ability to change resolutions of items is valuable to us because maybe we want some items to be uh, really sharp and defined and then other items don't need to be as sharp or defined and when we do that we cut down on the file size of our final project. On the left hand side here I have my item tree and this is similar to what we would expect to see in a CAD program. It's the uh, structure of our assembly and the first thing I want to do is um, create a sub-assembly of some components that are going to make up what's called the rebuild kit. So it's these caliper pistons and seals that I would like to sell as a unit. We all know that uh, an engineering bill of materials sometimes differs from a service bill of materials and sometimes we don't sell single items we sell a kit or a set of items as one uh, line item in our parts list so these parts here are going to make up 
a new assembly called the rebuild kit. And I can also come down here to my detailed parts lists which was created from the metadata that we extracted from our CAD files and this is also completely interactive so what I want to do is create a line item for that rebuild kit. I can assign it an item number maybe I want it to be 105 and give it a description say rebuild kit give it a part number maybe RK-00100 and for the information I can say click to order because I'm going to link this to my e-commerce site the address for that e-commerce site and I've created a new line item the next thing I want to do is probably link that to some graphics anytime there's a little gray ball over here next to a line item mean that it is linked to some 3d graphics so I can say edit linked with graphics and I can come out here and choose my rebuild kit subassembly and now I can see that that line item is linked with those components the next thing I want to do is maybe get rid of a component that's not going to be um, needed in my in my parts list and it's this little plug right here this cap usually if the the person already has this brake caliper on their motorcycle that little plug right there won't be uh, in existence so and it's probably a part that I don't sell so I can just simply uh, delete that out of my publication notice that the inlet plug rear caliper now is not linked to any more graphics and I've deleted that component out of my project really you can think of delete as a show or hide notice that the component really still does exist in my project but it has a red X showing that it's been hidden or deleted I am able to restore uh, components at a later date if I decide down the road that oh, okay now I really do want to show that I could restore that as well so now we've kind of set up our structure here we've, we've adjusted the item tree and we've created a new entry in the parts list I'm ready to start actually creating the pages of my catalog which is controlled over here in this area IPC pages illustrated parts catalog pages so my first page is simply going to be an assembly view of the caliper and I want to get a good viewpoint so I'm going to maybe set it to be something like that I'm going to set the page viewpoint then I can rename this page to be uh, caliper assembly notice how all of my rows currently in my parts list are kind of a light gray in color that means they're not active on this page right now if I want to activate those rows I can right click on my page and come over here to detailed parts list rows flyout menu and say activate with visible geometry so just a couple clicks and I have easily activated the items that I want to be seen on that page Another thing I want to do over here on my parts list is set the indentation for those components that make up the rebuild kit. Basically what I'm saying is all of these items need to be indented to a value of 2 because I want them to fall under the rebuild kit which has an indentation value of 1. So I'm able to kind of structure my parts list in that fashion as well. So I've set my page viewpoint, I've activated the rows that I want to be active, now maybe let's take a look at what it would take to create an exploded view or an exploded page. I'm going to clone the page that I already have, make that one the active one by double clicking on it, and maybe I'll rename this one to, to be uh, Caliper Explosion. And now I'm ready to create my explosion. So I highlight all my objects and then hit the Explode Assemblies button and I'll get my explode wizard that comes up. I want to create a linear explosion and the first thing I need to do is specify the direction in which I want these items to explode. So I use this little manipulator tool here, drag its origin to a surface where I can get a normal vector shooting off of that surface. I want to explode in the Y direction with a value of 0.015 and hit next and we'll see that my items explode. So maybe what we have two clicks there and very easily I have an exploded view I'm able to um, reorient this explosion any way I want to so one thing I want to do is have the housing the right housing the uh, bleeder screw and that bleeder cap as a group so they all stay together and then maybe I want to reorder 
the way these items have exploded. I want those guide pins to be outside of the housing and maybe I want this housing, the left hand housing, to sit somewhere like that. So just a few more clicks and very easily I have an explosion that makes sense here. I can say next and then finish. Maybe I want to go through that same workflow to bring the bleeder screw and the bleeder cap up away from that uh, housing so I can select those items, go back into my explosion wizard. Again, I want to create a linear explosion. I'm going to grab the origin of that manipulator tool up to this flat surface, specify my vector and the value, and I've exploded those two items. Maybe I want to bring them a little bit closer, and I'm able to do that with this slider bar here. And then hit finish, and I have my, my assembly completely exploded and I'm ready to set the page viewpoint. Maybe something like that. Zoom in a little bit here. Yeah, I like that right there. So I'm going to go ahead and set the page viewpoint. And now I want to create a 2D graphic of this exploded view. So I come over here to my 2D preview tab. I'm going to automatically generate some callouts with the click of one button. And then go into my Cortona 2D Editor Pro and edit this thing. So I'm going to call this the exploded view, this 2D graphic image, and choose to edit it. And you'll see that it's going to launch the Cortona 2D Editor Pro. Maybe the first thing I want to do is shrink my view boundaries. I can add some text if I'd like to for a title. Maybe I'll bump the font size up to 20. I'm going to say rear caliper assembly and give the part number as well for that assembly. Maybe I want to enter a logo down the lower right hand corner. And notice that it automatically created those callouts and I'm able to reorganize those easily by selecting the group that creates that hotspot along with the text and I'm able to kind of drag and pull on these lines and orient those any way I want to. So it's very intuitive, easy to use, and it's all built into Rapid Author suite of tools. Once I'm done making my edits and I like the way my 2D graphic looks, I can go ahead and hit save here and then exit out of the 2D Cortona Editor Pro. Say OK on this dialog. I'm going to save my work thus far. And maybe now I want to create a some type of page that's going to explain to the end user when they need to order that rebuild kit. So I'm going to clone that page again. I'm going to make that my active page. And maybe this time I want to delete these brake pads off of this page because I don't need them. Notice that we can see down here in the parts list the little red X through the gray ball. Just by one click I can deactivate with deleted geometry, meaning that those rows now have gone light gray in color and won't be active on that page. So let's say I want to get clarity, I want to split this thing in half so that I can actually see those caliper pistons. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to select my rebuild kit over here invert my selection and say trim representations and maybe I'll trim it about halfway through something like that so you can see with the use of this manipulator tool it's very easy to move objects around the screen I can say trim and we'll see all of the components that were selected were trimmed the only thing I didn't trim were the components that make up that rebuild kit the uh, caliper pistons and the seals now maybe I want to uh, reposition those items, maybe pull them out a little bit to show it as if uh, the calipers are being used. Notice everything we're doing to our components right now are only being done on this page. So if I went back to my other pages, it wouldn't be sectioned and the position of these calipers would still be in their original position. But I want to pull them out on this page and maybe I want to uh, change change the color. Let me say OK to that dialog. Maybe I want to change the color. I have the ability to, to do that. Maybe I'll make those green and maybe I'll make the seals red to make them stand out.
Maybe I want to make everything except the rebuild kit background items to make them transparent in color. So I'm going to select my rebuild kit, invert that selection, and come over here to my IPC pages and say set as background. Now we'll see that those are transparent in color. Maybe I, to even uh, mute them a little bit more, I can maybe change those to be black in color or gray. So now we can see that I really have my focus on the components that make up the rebuild kit. And now I want to put a call out on here that points to the surfaces of the piston. So I'm going to come over here to my object library. And the object library houses all types of components that I can pull into my projects. So I can pull in tools. If I want to uh, display some tools, these are typically uh, used more often in the rapid manual portion, but I could pull them into a catalog if I wanted to. And I also have things such as callouts. So I'm going to say add to project. I can unpin that menu now. And for my reference lines, I want to pick where I'm pointing those reference lines. Maybe I can add a new point so that I'm pointing at both surfaces of each piston. And I can bring that call out into, into view here change where the leaders come off of it and the text is going to say uh, presence of brake fluid equals caliper rebuild required. I'm able to change the appearance maybe I want it to have a, a green background and maybe I can make the border a little bit thicker. Let's actually bump the size of that text up once say OK I can change the position of that call out maybe to be somewhere over there. Set that page viewpoint. I like it. I'm going to remove that call out from all IPC pages except for this one because when I added that object, I added it to the project. So I need to make sure that it's only being shown on that page. Maybe I could give a name to that page, which I forgot to do, and I'm going to say, um, let's say, Rebuild Kit. Save my work. Deactivate with the deleted geometry because we deleted those uh, brake pads off of there. And I think now we're good to go. So maybe I want to preview my project. I can hit that little button there to see what our published output would look like. Notice we have our first page here, which was just the assembly in its entirety. I can come down to my caliper explosion. It's going to automatically animate to that exploded view. If I click on the 2D graphics button, we can see that 2D graphics that we created in the 2D Cortona editor. Or and I can come to that rebuild page as well. And I'll see the call out on screen and we can see that those some of the items have been sectioned and they are background items, meaning that they're translucent. And notice here that my rebuild kit has an underline informing me that it has a hot link applied to it. If I select that, I'll be taken to my e-commerce page where I can order that part, I can add it to my cart, have it shipped to me. I know that I'm going to get the right part because I had a very intuitive graphic representation of my assembly and uh, this really streamlines the process of ordering parts and things of that nature. So you can see how quick and easy we were able to create a parts catalog. Having this kind of tool in your toolbox is really going to make your tech pubs group more efficient and more productive when it comes to creating technical documentations. So let's finish up with a couple slides here. We can see the benefits of Rapid Author, that it's easy to use and intuitive. There's no CAD experience required. We have integrated and linked graphics and text. It's a single tool for all authoring. We're going to increase our efficiency and effectiveness of our tech pubs group. It's flexible and configurable to meet your business needs. And we're going to provide our end users with a richer experience.
And I'll leave up on the screen for a minute our contact information. I appreciate your time today and watching this demonstration. Feel free to contact myself or Kim Corbridge, who's the sales manager, if you'd like to set up a demo, maybe live on site with you or over the web. Also, if you uh, already have one of our products and you already deal with us, uh, I just want to make you aware that we do have a tech support line. That's We really pride ourselves on supporting the products we sell, and the information for that is down below on this slide as well. Thank you for your time today, and come back and check us out often.